Kia ora. welcome to Bus Taz. Now if you're watching my videos, you're probably the sort of person that as a kid took the batteries out of their toys or maybe even pulled their toys completely apart and rebuilt them to be maybe faster, go a little bit further, maybe you would have swapped out some, some AA batteries and put in some D cell batteries to, to give it a bit more grunt. Um, and maybe you found that actually connecting them differently and increasing the voltage actually made the whole thing go just a lot faster. Now when it comes to the battery, the ultimate battery I think is the 18650. It's got plenty of power, um, but it's just so common. It's in bloody near everything battery powered you buy. So there's zillions of them around. Now, um, I'm going to stack a few together and make myself a 12 watt battery. So short of a pocket nuclear power station, this is probably as good as power gets. And so while I haven't yet got a, a sure thing use for them, um, I've bought a stack of these. I'm going to stick them all together and make myself a battery. So it starts with the world famous 18650 battery which I first came across when I was vaping. If you still smoke analog cigarettes, really want to try vaping, it's the ultimate way to get rid of them. But anyway these ones I guess come out of power tools or laptops or something, I bought them locally and I've simply arranged them, they're, they're, they're a mix of different cells from different companies, from different machines. But what they all have in common is they're all between 2032 and 2094 milliamp hours according to the guy I bought them off. And as I showed in a previous AliExpress haul, I bought these, I think they're brilliant. You just literally throw the batteries in them and you've got yourself a little power wall. Now this right here is a 4S2P uh, set up so that will throw out well it's not really 12 volts it's kind of closer to 15 volts I suppose um, and I've got three of them so that would make it a 4S uh, 6P power wall and I've got this little balancing unit you can have up to three of them this one's good for I think 30 amps Oh, it's warming up here. I think it's about 18 degrees. It's actually cooler than it's been the last few days, but to your average Kiwi, that's pretty warm. It's still cool enough to wear a t-shirt. Now, I know some of you guys don't like it when I don't wear my t-shirt. Um, that said, if you've got a cool t-shirt that you want me to wear, I mean, I've, I've, I've got a thousand of these black t-shirts. If you've got a cool t-shirt that you want me to wear, then get in touch and send it to me. Wear it and I'll show it off to both of my subscribers. Of course, if it's not actually cool when I get it, then I, I won't wear it. Anyway, back to the business end of this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck these batteries into these frames. Now, um, <clears throat> What I need to be careful of, of course, is to try and get each parallel set um, balanced. Thanks for the advice of one of my viewers. I'm going to use the Repacker website to throw in, and you, and you throw in with a like a CSV file all of your battery capacities, what you've got. You tell it what, um, how many cells in series you've got and how many in parallel and it spits out uh, a list of how best to um, to arrange them. I've done that manually in the past and you know that that works fine. Um, it's slow but this is really cool. So when it comes to the actual configuration of this um, it's, it's a little wee bit confusing. Inside each box it says there's a negative and a positive 
and then here it says there's a negative if it's parallel and then there's a positive um, or it's a negative and a positive and so it's just all over the show now the instructions say to completely ignore the battery holders and look down the side which says all the way along this side is positive and all the way along this side is negative now that's easy enough when you're just chucking cells in but for it to work um, when I'm trying to get the cells balanced I need to know which cells are parallel and which ones are not now even that's pretty easy uh, these two are clearly connected together so that's obviously our parallel set now there's four parallel sets in here to make up the 4S so that would suggest two, two, two and two which also means that the first two here are going to end up in parallel with the first two in the other two sets so I'm going to arrange them like this which means that this here is a parallel set of six so that means that these two cells these two cells and these two cells are a single parallel pack of six so the six cells that I put in here are going to act like a single unit or one or one battery cell so for my first parallel pack I need to find these capacities and throw them in now unlike the classic AA battery these don't have a little knob sticking out the top um, saying that that's positive and in fact because they're um, out of you know something where you, you, you as a user were never going to touch them in fact these ones are Samsung quite a good band, brand I guess um, they are still quite easy to spot in that the bottom is flat and the top does have a center knob it's just that it doesn't stick up um, proud of the top it also has a little ring around the top here now of course you can confirm it to be sure I have 3.73 volts positive volts which means that the red was touching the positive terminal of the battery which was the top which has this little ring and has a, a smaller contact so I have thrown in my first parallel group of six and uh, what I've done is I've put my highest and lowest capacity together um, then the next highest and lowest and then the two middle capacities so that within each unit they're also um, as balanced as I can get them although the overall balance since they're going to effectively be connected together the overall balance is more important on to the next set so I need 94, 87, 79, 52, 39 and 33 So carrying on on that logic, what I should then get is fairly balanced parallel packs. Now what I should also get is a nominal 14.4 or closer to 15 operating volts out of each unit. So that's 14.96 and the second one 14.93. And 14.95. Now I can actually assemble the packs. Right, so I have already screwed these to the bottom. Now, something I, all, I mentioned earlier in my AliExpress video that I don't particularly like is these screws are live. These 14 volts there um, at what is it? 4,000 milliamp hours for this unit. So there's a certain amount of um, risk involved, and of course there's you know soldering bits sticking out the bottom and that. But these need to be looked after so that nothing ever comes into contact with these two screws. Now also this is negative, this is positive. 
that's also negative and positive so they also form a connection between the cells so need to get them the right way around I'm making sure I've got the terminals at the top and the uh, strip connector at the bottom and just pop them on now I need to do them up this is seriously unbelievably easy um, it feels feels almost too easy for um, making up a battery pack now so now I have instead of two in parallel I have four in parallel which means instead of 4,000 milliamp hours or thereabouts, I now have 8,000 milliamp hours or 8 amp hours in a battery that is tiny and weighs next to nothing. Now when I stack the third set on, um, again, taking quite a, quite a lot of care that I've got positive touching positive and not the other way around, which could get quite fun, could get quite exciting. Now I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 amp hours. That's quite a bit of battery. Still weighs very little. It's very small, very simple. So I'm just going to screw these last terminals on. And then on the top, goes the BMS. Now, I don't know how good this is, I don't know whether it works at all, but that's the BMS. So it goes on top. Now strangely, I don't have the right number of these. I don't know whether that's because I lost one or what went wrong. I do have a nut that will work. So I'll have to find um, probably some more of these so that I can put another plate across the top to protect this BMS but the only thing missing now is the strip connector it connects all the parallel cells together and it's this strip that makes these two cells the same as these two cells the same as these two cells now if they were out of balance then it could get a fair amount of current zoomed through this strip because I'm about to connect two batteries together that in parallel that I'm assuming are imbalanced because I have used this website now. These also, they've, they've got this little tip that sticks up here that um, can only go on one way. And that's that done. So, so this now is... Uh, um, this is a 12 amp hour battery. Um, I don't know what the true capacity is actually going to be like. It's got a little charging port or a little power port, depending on which way you wanted to look at that. Um, I expected when it arrived it would have connected to these two holes here, the XD60 plug, which it doesn't, and in fact doesn't have room to put one anyway it wouldn't fit because of the strip terminal but it does have positive and negative outputs um, in the top end now i don't know if it's important not to use the ones on the lower boards because they're not running through the bms it has a couple of fuses um, <clears throat> so i'm going to go with these two terminals as the main positive and negative terminals uh, because 
one because that's protected by the fuses so that to me says that's the one I want to use and then the other ones are positive on the opposite side so now um, I need to find a way of charging it and find a way of discharging it and see what it does anyway that's done oh I did want to before I go I just wanted to show you guys this this is pretty cool um, I don't know what it is well I do know what it is but I don't know what that says what it is is a little electric coolant heater and pump so this will draw coolant the, the, the logic what it's designed for is drawing coolant out of your engine heating it up and pumping it back into your engine or in, back into your cooling system which is a preheater um, it runs on 240 volts and it does exactly the same job as my diesel liquid heater now the reason I've got it is if, I've, if I can if I've got well, 240 volt power there's no point in using diesel so I could just fire this thing up it actually goes up this way um, and it has to sit <coughs> vertically so this has got a little pump in it um, a little element in it I think it's 3000 watts so it's yeah 3000 watts so it's got a fair bit of grunt um, and this will heat up my coolant for my heating system and my hot water system uh, off of 240 volts obviously needs a better plug but super cheap of course in a Russia in a Russia this one um, still from AliExpress so it came to me from China but it's made in Russia and all of the instructions are in Russian so unless I can find some sort of translation for that it's not going to be it's not going to be much use anyway thanks for watching um, hope you enjoyed the video if you did click all the buttons you know the like and the subscribe and all that and hopefully that means we'll see you again soon take care Matua.